Hello, motherfuckers, and welcome to the Bells Be Speaking podcast. I am Corey L, so that's Corey L or Core E L, aka Bells, your host, and I am happy to have you here. Before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw my disclaimers out there. If you don't like cussing, if you don't like strong opinions and some strong confidence in stating your opinion and standing on that shit, if you don't like laughter and joy, and if you don't like someone having an opinion that's other than your own, I suggest you click the fuck off this podcast right now because this is not going to be the podcast for you. Let me tell you what doesn't happen on this podcast or over here because the podcast is just an extension of me, right? I'm not simmering myself down. I'm not shifting or changing my opinion based on what makes you feel comfortable or uncomfortable. I'm going to say what I feel and I mean it. And I'm going to stand on it. If that's how I feel right there and then and there in this point in time, that's what the fuck I'm going to say. And if you don't like it, especially if you somebody that don't like me, I'm not your cup of tea. You don't like me. You don't prefer to talk to me. We don't talk in real life. And especially if you talk shit, bitch, you really need to click the fuck off this podcast. Because you ain't got no business consuming the content of someone that you don't like. That's fucking weird. If you don't like fish... You don't drive to Long John Silver's and place an order. Why? Because you don't like fish. If you don't like tacos or Hispanic food, you're not going to get your ass in the car and drive to Taco Bell or Chipotle, right? Why? Because you don't like that content. You don't like that food. So you don't drive to those places and purchase their food, right? Right? If you don't like sweets, you're not going to go and buy a pack of cookies, right? Why? Because you don't engage with the content that you don't like, right? So the same goes for this podcast and any of my content. If you do not like me, get the fuck off, you fucking weirdo. Get off. Very simple. I don't like spicy food, so guess what I'm not going to put on my food? Hot sauce. Apply the same mentality. Drink your water and mind your business. My water of choice today is Aquafina. Very simple. They ran out of Nestle at Walmart. They ran out of the Nestle pack, so I got Aquafina. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get into today's topic. Okay, so we're going to talk about why my fuse, my, my capacity, right, for mama's boys. Being with a mama's boy, as a heterosexual woman. I got this much room for you if you're, that, if you're a mama's boy. About that much. And I'm going to explain why. Now, let me start off first with identifying my bias, okay? So my bias is I don't have any of my own kids physically yet, right? My spirit babies, my children have not incarnated yet, so I don't have any children. That's my first bias. So I don't have a son of my own yet physically, aside from Sonny, but he's a cat. That's different. The second thing is I've had my fair share of time with a mama's boy that was on the end of the spectrum where he's a mama's boy, right? like close with his mom he was the youngest child and then i also for my third point of my bias i also have my fair share of experience with someone who is on the other end of the spe- the mama's boy spectrum where he didn't have a good relationship with his mother okay so those are my three biases now i'm gonna talk about why you got this much about this much this match room of being a mama's boy on the end of the spectrum where you and your mama like this let me start off with the one where the where you're on the end of the spectrum where you don't have that close of relationship with your mother as a man or you have a tumultuous relationship with your mother as a man i don't really have room for that one either or that much room either like if it's like fuck my mama i don't i'm probably we probably not gonna get along and be able to click that well because in my eyes in my perspective you don't have the capacity to love, respect, and appreciate a woman because you don't have that 
foundational aspect from your relationship with your mother. So if you had a bad relationship with your mama, especially to the point where it's like you may be beefing with your mama, it's not really going to work for us because you are not going to trust, recognize, or accept my love and my appreciation and my interactions with you because it's not normal to you. It doesn't feel safe. It doesn't feel trustworthy. You're going to self-sabotage. You're going to feel like this is too good to be true. You're going to feel like I maybe I have an alternative motive for something because your brain is not trained to have good treatment from women. So you're not going to be able to have a good relationship with me. That's just what it is. We may have hot and cold, hit or miss every now and then, some good experiences. But overall, it's not going to be sustainable because at the root of who you are, you have problems and issues with your brain associates with that kind of stuff with women, right? So that's why I wouldn't work with someone that's on that end of the spectrum. Now, to focus on the topic of today, it's not that I don't want you to have a good relationship with your mother. It's not that I feel like you're supposed to get older and then, like, push your mother to the side or nothing like that. Honestly, I don't really give a damn what the fuck you do with your mom and y'all relationship. As long as it ain't nothing crazy or involving me, you supposed to, I mean, that's your mom, right? But my fucking issue comes in when, let me just start off with saying my main point, one of my main points. He is your son to the mothers. The single mothers, the married mothers, I don't give a fuck how you categorize yourself. Whether it's the oldest boy, the youngest boy, the middle, I don't give a damn if you got all boys. Your son is your son, not your fucking man. Meaning, when I'm with this man, regardless of how old, old or young you may consider him i don't give a damn if you if you call him a boy this man that can make his own decisions that use his own choice his own his hormones instincts pheromones whatever fuck else gravitated him towards me and that's why he and i are interacting i didn't force your son to come and fucking talk to me i didn't even approach your son and even if i did it's still his choice to to interact and i don't approach men but i'm just saying he grown as hell. He's old enough and able-minded enough to decide that he wants to deal with me, right? Right. Now, if I don't deal, not if, because it's not even an if, if, if it's I don't, right? But I'm just saying, I don't do competition at all in any form because there is no competition, right? Whether you agree or not, there is no competition. I don't compete. I don't go back and forth. I don't juggle. I don't do none of that weird shit with other women. Other possible suitors for him, if you will. Other possible women that could be an option for him. I don't compete. They don't get the time of day. They don't, ain't, ain't none of that. Right? I'm not, I'm not even finna argue with a bitch. I'm not finna go back and forth with a bitch. Let's be real. You're his mother. You won't ever be, ro let's just put, put it simple. You won't ever be fucking him. Cause that's the, that's your son, right? So if I'm not gonna sit here and entertain, compete, argue, do a damn thing, I'm not even gonna glance at you cause you don't get shit from me or from him. If I won't do that for somebody that essentially has the ability to be in the position that I'm in with him, like in the, not the position, but the spot, the spot of the romantic partner, right? You won't ever be in the spot of romantic partner. Because that's just not your spot. If I won't do that with them, what makes you think I'm finna sit here and compete back and forth with you or struggle with you as if we're competing on who gets him? Bitch, Miss Shirley need to... Me, these mamas need to sit their asses down somewhere. Don't get me wrong. That's your son. Like I said, I have not had my kids yet. But I'm connected to my babies in the spirit, so I know I'm not going to play about my kids. I'm not going to play about my son. I'm not going to play about my daughters. But since we're talking about men in this video, I'll specifically focus on sons right now. I'm not going to play about my son. Absolutely not. But what I'm also not going to do is sit up and act like 
his romantic relationship and someone else getting romantic attention from him that's another woman is a threat to me because that's just weird. And I don't care how you try to flip it, twist it, rub it up, or split it down. That is fucking weird. You putting yourself in the category of other bitches that want to be with him. So at this point, the whole respect for him, respect for you as his mother, as his, you know what I'm saying? The one that raised him, if you did, whatever the case may be. That goes out the window because you didn't move yourself out of this category and put yourself in the category with other bitches that want to be with him. Don't get me wrong. There's a difference between looking out for your son. And this that's something that, regardless of if he's 50, 60, 70 years old, if you're still alive and a mother, you're going to always look out for your son's safety and his well-being, regardless of the friend, girlfriend, wife, whoever that he's with, because you want him to be safe. You want him to be alive, healthy, well, and safe on this planet, right? That is your primary concern, right? And that's what your primary concern should be, like, you know, I don't give a damn. You, ain't nobody finna do nothing to my son. You know what I'm saying? Like, his safety is, as a human being. Yes, and I, I feel like to that extent, yes, you're gonna always have that. Because that's what parents are essentially here for. They want their kids, their offspring to be safe. And I don't have no problem with that. I honestly, honestly, even if I do feel like it's overbearing, Knowing that it's coming from a good place, let's say, for instance, you have a, or we have an instance where your mama keep calling, keep calling, keep calling, and she called because she's like, you know, she heard something happened to you, or she heard this, or she, um, whatever, something like a serious concern that's rooted in something where it's like, okay, your safety, your health, you, you know what I'm saying? I can see that. You know, it's something like a legitimate, a legitimate concern. Like, okay, you, you get hurt or something, you in a hospital. Yes, your mother's going to be there. Yes, she's gonna, you're her child. She's going to come check on you, right? That's okay. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the overbearing shit. I'm talking about the sizing up somebody that your son bring into the picture or whatever because you don't have your own damn life, your own damn stability, or your own damn healthy relationships or good experiences with men in general. Not his daddy, not the man you was talking to before you was with his daddy, not the man you was talking to after or any of the, you don't have really, you don't have good relationships with men in your own life. And then that's when they start coming up with these bullshit ass terms and sayings, oh, you don't know love until you have a son. What the fuck you mean you don't know you have love or true love until you have a son? What the fuck? you do with his daddy yes there are some women who have babies from situations where it wasn't their choice especially with that that fucking law that they passed or tried to you know pass about the abortions like the my choice stuff stuff can be different some people you may have conceived from something that was not your choice at all that's different that okay to that part is different. But what about them whole fucking nine months in between? What about after you have this baby? I know you ain't in a country or in a state where it's only women. I know you encountering men. I know you are. I know you meeting men and I know you've talked to at least one other man since then. What about your relationship with your fucking father? Oh, you don't want to talk about that. Stop putting the responsibility of a healthy romantic relationship and those expectations that you either are not getting or nobody want to fucking give to you. You need to figure out what that, what those negative beliefs are or whatever it is that's hindering you from having those healthy relationships with men and heal those and fix those and have your own fucking relationship and stop placing that on your son. Like, I get it to a certain degree, like, especially if your son grew up in a, with just you. So you was a single mama and it was just him and, you know, he loves you, he appreciates you, he helped you out, you know. And then let's say the son get older, right? And he's now acting out the same 
habits or tendencies that he either started doing in childhood or felt or was forced to start doing in his childhood that he felt he had to do, which is taking care of you, being the man of the house, because you didn't do what the fuck you were supposed to do with who you had a baby with. And like I said, they just passed the fucking laws that, that I, as far as I know, Planned Parenthood been around for a long time. I'm pro-choice, let it be no doubt about it. If you wasn't having a good relationship with the fucking father to begin with, nobody forced you to have a baby. You did not create the baby on your own? Absolutely not. I come from a single mama. Nobody forced you to have the baby. You didn't make it on your own, but nobody forced you to have it. Nobody forced you to keep it. If you couldn't see then and there that this wasn't going to work and that this situation was, there was no love there, there was no this, no that, why didn't you, y'all ain't going to like what I'm about to say, you chose to go through with this and then now you're choosing even more to put these burdens off onto this boy to be your true love and, and show you real love and protect you and look out for you and be the man of this house that he was brought into without asking when it was your choice to either fix the shit before he got here or at the very least work on the shit after the boy is here. Now you got a grown ass man that's still feeling like he's in a fucking relationship damn near with somebody because he feels like it's his purpose to, or his part of his responsibilities to take care of you and be there for you the way your partner is supposed to be because you didn't do what the fuck you were supposed to do either before during or after his incarnation to prevent him from having to take them roles on let alone if you got other kids and then now he got to look out for the kids and shit like that that's why you got a problem with me because you feel like somebody taking your man but bitch you need to Get, get a real man. You're supposed to be with his damn daddy somewhere. I know you be, you ain't, you mean to tell me out of all of these different people that you done been with, you, and it ain't even gotta be a whole, whole, whole lot of people. I'm just saying, I know that you've met someone else and I know you've had other connections. You can't tell me that you, you did everything and you worked on yourself and you, you figured out what that, what that real love is that you expecting this boy to deliver for you and be the real example. You can't tell me that you took the time to work on that shit if you still expecting him to be that for you. And then now this a grown ass man and you all in his business, all invested in him and expecting him to be doing what your man's supposed to be doing because you still haven't fucked up relationships and you still coming from a hurt little girl, unlucky in love perspective. And he just supposed to take on a burden and supposed to just keep coming and, and giving you what you need to be working on on your own. Like you are not his queen no more once he gets older. And if anything, because I remember I was talking to a guy and um, his mom was like, she referred to me as a princess and herself as a queen. Bitch, no, I'm, I'm, you're not his fucking queen. You're his mom. Like, what makes you think that the person that he, and I could, yes, we wasn't married because we were young, but like, especially let alone if you're in a marriage dynamic, you got to be crazy. You smoking dick if you think that you the queen and that the, the wife is supposed to come second to you because that's your son. You're too invested in his life. You are too invested because your brain has made these romantic ties to this person that is your son because you can't get that from somewhere else. And that's just what it is. So now you're coming to me. Like the one that's in a, a relationship. Because if I'm dealing with him, the relationship is good. I'm not dealing with no man that's treating me crazy. None of that type of shit. So if I'm with this man, it's because it's going good. So not only are you jealous. Because like I said, you moved yourself out of the concerned mama category. When it's someone's mother... Someone, it doesn't even have to like matter what their title is specifically. Like, I give people respect until you give me a reason to have to match your level of disrespect. Grandma, mama, auntie, cousin, sister, friends, like, I don't have no reason to just come in like disrespecting nobody. Especially if the, you already part of his life, like, I, you know, I'm not doing that. Yes, I'm going to respect you until you show me why. Okay, now you're not in this category no more of automatic respect. Like, I automatically respect you is what I'm trying to say. 
until you give me a reason not to. You chose to move yourself out of this category and put yourself over here because you don't even view yourself as being here. You view yourself as, and so because you view yourself this way, now I'm also simultaneously viewing you this way. You're, for one, jealous because you see another woman, a younger woman, a woman that's younger than you, having a healthy, happy relationship with someone that's close to you that you know, and judging by the dynamic where he's in the position where he has to be your man, essentially, that lets me know already right then and there that you didn't have no healthy relationships, either with his father or in general. So that's the first thing. So you jealous because you see a younger woman having a better relationship than you had or any of the relationships you've had. That's the first thing. And on top of that, now you also feel like I'm having a better relationship or a good relationship or getting the attention, care, affection that you are supposed to be getting in your mind from this person when he wasn't supposed to be giving you that shit in, in that way in the first place. Like, boys love their mamas. Like, I get it. Like, I got a brother, so I know how boys are when it comes to, you know, mom, look what I did. Like, I get it. And not even just boys. Like, kids love their parents. Kids love their moms. You want to make your mom proud. You want to get your mom nice things and shit like that. But when you start expecting shit, like, oh, he used to spend time with me like that. He normally get me this. Why? Ha he normally buy me that. He Uh-uh. Because if you, let me tell you something. Because if you was married to Mr. Earl or whoever the fuck his daddy was, you wouldn't have that much time to be realizing what he's no longer doing for you because you would have a man. A grown ass, stable ass, consistent ass man in your life doing that for you in the first place. So you wouldn't notice what your son is no longer doing for you because of who he's spending time with, because of who is taking on the more like important roles in his life. You know what I'm saying? Like you shouldn't feel like you being pushed out the way in the first place because you shouldn't even be trying to stand in that fucking spot to begin with. You put yourself in the wife position. And now you mad at me because I'm in the position where I'm supposed to be as the wife. Because you can't go and get wifed up to save your fucking life by anybody else that's actually on your level. So all you feel like you have is your son. And I don't like that. That's the, mama, the mama's boys I don't like. I get it. Sometimes stuff happens. Sometimes you may have had a good relationship with the... I get it. To a certain degree. But at your big age, if this is your son, and I talk to men, all the men I be dealing with, they always be older than me. So if the man is older than me, I know for a fact, and his, his mama is older than us. You know, you grown as hell. You overgrown. You know what you're doing. You know exactly how you feel. You know exactly how you are considering it. You feel like you're the number one woman in his life when you are not supposed to be that to begin with. Unless he like a child living at home, you know what I'm saying? Like, child living at home is in, like, minor. You, he's still developing. You're helping him to grow his brain. Okay. Of course, he's not going to come home with a wife and, or a major girlfriend in sixth grade. Like, okay, yes, mom is still the head of the household. But mom don't need to be the head of his life. You don't birth your husband. You birthed your son to grow up and be someone else's husband or partner. You was never supposed to be in that position to begin with. Hence the reason why it takes two people to create a baby. Ideally, you want to be with the person that you bring this baby into the world with. So that way, both of you are there to help and raise this person and to guide this, this person, this man, into being a strong, healthy, supportive man that is a great person to be with, a great life partner, great father, so and so on and so forth. So when he turns 18, maybe 17, depending on when he, when he, what year he was born and when he graduate, or when he was when he was born in the year, because that will determine when he graduates. Like, I graduated at 17. Or he may go to the Navy or the Army or something, whatever. Your work is to get him up until this point so he can, when he gets to this point, when he leaves the nest, he's good. He can sustain himself. Of course, that don't mean you stop dealing with him forever. Like, that's your son. It's just, you know, you're just embarking on a new stage of life with him. But essentially, you get them out the house, get all the kids out the house, and then that's when now, okay, me and daddy, 
mommy and daddy, grandma and grandpa, if the man got kids, now grandma and, and grandpa, nana and papa, mommy and daddy got more time to themselves to spend time in their marriage together because they done raised all the kids and got the kids out the house. Now, if any kids over there, it's because they got they watching the grandkids. That's what it's supposed to be like, in my opinion. But guess what? You're not even going to have them feelings of wanting him to get pushed out and go out and explore and have a good life and start your own family because, okay, I didn't raise you, but now you're supposed to be in the position of my man. So you never want to let go to begin with. And that's just, that's just the problem. And that's just what I, what I can't get with. That's what I can't get with. Even if you ain't with his damn daddy, you can be with somebody that you met, like I said, somewhere else. Life goes on, years and years go on after you have this baby. You go meet other people, be with somebody else. Or even if you fucking single. But... Either way it go, nowhere in that formula or in that category is for you to think that you the one that's in the, the number one spot or the like the queen of his life or the 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 center of his You his mama. You the carrier to get him on this planet to incarnate as a human, because you need a human vessel to create another human, and from there, this person that is incarnated. And here to create, to live out their own life mission. You are guiding them to equip them as much as you can with morals, um, habits, tendencies, thought patterns, whatever else. To equip them as much as you can on that journey. Because somewhere down the line, they're going to eventually leave from being around you as much as they're around you when they first come into the picture. Right? The way you interact with your son at 18 is completely different from the, from the way you interact with the newborn. Because they're at different stages of their lives, right? They're not here. We don't have kids and you don't have your kids for them to be you or to be like an ex just an extension of you. You have kids because you're creating a whole other person and you're there to guide them on how to be the best version of that person that they're already supposed to be or that they're already coming here to be. You don't engulf them. And think that, okay, now you're supposed to be my person. What? Who, what? This is not build a man workshop. In terms of build a man, write him down, and then the, the universe or whatever you believe in sends me the man for me in the form of my stomach. Absolutely not. You don't raise your person and then be with him. It's already a man out there for you. You don't have kids to date him. So what makes you think that you're going to be in a spot or in a position of the one that is his number one and his queen. Quit trying to get in my fucking spot. And then quit trying to be, quit being mad that he put me rightfully here in the spot as his queen, as his number one, as his wife. You know what I'm saying? As the way it's supposed to be, who he goes on to create life with and a household with where he raises kids and becomes the nana and papa. You mad because you overstepping your boundaries and now you stepping in my lane. It ain't like I'm coming into your household while your son's six and seven and trying to become the mama. You stepping into the category of his life, of my, essentially my household, trying to be the wife. And I'm not dealing with that from a regular human, from a, from a regular girl that's not his mama. What makes you think that I'm about to deal with that from you and you already definitely not even supposed to be in that spot? I'm not. I'm not. He is your son, not your fucking man. This is not your second chance, third chance on life because you just couldn't get it right with men because you won't take the time to look at whatever the hell is holding you back, whatever stories you got going on up here that keep preventing you from having healthy love. And the reason why you keep having failed relationship after failed relationship from whatever you're failing to see in your life, that don't give you an excuse to just ignore it and then come and put all this pressure on this person right here to be your person when he wasn't supposed to be that to begin with. And then on top of that, you want to try to have animosity or hostility towards the one that's me, like someone like me, that's in the spot that I'm actually supposed to be in? 
doing what I'm supposed to do. I did what I was supposed to do, and I'm still doing what I'm supposed to do. Hence the reason why I'm in a healthy, happy relationship. Like, what part of that don't you get? No! That is not how I work, and that's why... I don't be having no room for it. And, like, that's why I say to a certain extent. Because if your mama all in your life, all, she just got to know. Like, just too, just too much, too overbearing. You damn near got, already got another woman in your life. I'm not dealing with that. I be done cussing Miss Shirley old ass the fuck out. Then I have to beat your auntie up and beat your sisters up. And then you going to be mad because if you were mama's boy in the first place, you don't want nobody disrespecting your mama. And you probably already used to her doing shit or saying shit that's too much or overstepping boundaries. But because that's your mama, a.k.a. she got so much fucking mental control over you, Somehow you're going to be expecting me to just put up with it because you put up with the abuse. Even though it don't, it's not physical, like um, harsh abuse or verbal abuse and nothing like that. Just because you are okay and accustomed to the manipulation, you will be expecting me to be okay with it. And not be damned. Now nah, I got to beat all y'all ass because ain't none of y'all finna fucking play with me. And that's just too much. That's just too much. It's too much. There is no competition. Not from a bitch on the street, not from your mama, not from a little sister, not from nothing. They gonna know their place. But it's not because I feel like, okay, you don't need your mama no more because you got me. Those are two different categories. You get what I'm saying? In a lot of ways, you won't need your mama no more because you a grown-ass fucking man. Yeah, you shouldn't need your mama to come handle your business or take care of shit for you unless it's they're watching the grandkids for the, um, the, the poker event weekend or something. Other than that, yeah, you a grown-ass adult. You shouldn't need your mama for as much as, as you did when you was younger. That's what you have a wife for if it's something that you need a woman to handle. But if she's used to being that one, being in that spot and being low-key in control of all your other relationships, a.k.a. you got your mama in the position of what it's supposed to be, the only chick, because I don't even, I don't even decide chick, main chick shit. Ain't no fucking main or side. I'm the only one. No fucking main chick. Main implies that there's someone else there. It's me and only me or I'm not in the fucking picture. And I'm damn sure I'm not finna come into no picture if you didn't put Miss Shirley ass in this position or you can't tell her old ass to go sit the fuck down or get her own man so she just accustomed to being in the spot. No. That is, uh-uh. No. Mm-mm. Because -mm. I'll be done cussing Miss Shirley ass out. And if she jumps stupid, I'll be done have to bop her ass down, knock that fucking wig off her head. And I don't, and that's just too much. Y'all know how people act, how women act when it's someone with, that they're that they are both interacting with, right? Y'all seen, we've seen how people fight and go back and forth when two women dealing with the same man. The energy, the hostility, the comments, the mm, all of that. That same energy, mamas be giving that shit too if they don't like the girl that their son is with because that woman is is for lack of a better term, taking their spot. It's like I said before, I'm not taking your spot. The reason why you feel like I'm taking your spot is because you ain't in the fucking spot you're supposed to be in. In the first place. You didn't put yourself in the girlfriend, wife, or only chick main priority position when you weren't supposed to be there to fucking begin with. Putting yourself in a damn position as if you finna fucking procreate with your son and literally make him a motherfucker. You stepping on my turf. And I'm supposed to just be okay with it because your son is, is used to you pushing him around and manipulating him. Emotionally manipulating him. Oh, well, I'm your mom. Well, oh, I done did this and I done did... Now you, now you abusive too? And you sick in the head? Mm -mm, that's just too much. Too much. No. So in conclusion, that's my that's pretty much all I had to say in this episode. He your son, not your man. Know your place. And like I said, this ain't got nothing to do with a mama being a mama following her mama's instincts or whatever. Because like I said, when it comes to mine, despite the fact that they are not incarnated yet, if you know, you know. You don't have to physically have your child here to feel their energy and connect with you. All the eggs that I'm having and that I have in my system... 
that I'm going to carry with me throughout my life and the eggs that my future children start off as, right? They're in my system right now. I was born with them and I'm going to always have the same set of eggs in my system, right? It ain't like we eat eggs off the carton to get the babies that we want. So just because I don't have my kids right now physically don't mean that I can't energetically or vibrationally connect to how I feel or how I would feel as a mother. I've known from a, from a little girl that I was going to be a mom or that I wanted to be a mom. So my point is I don't, I'm not dealing with too far on either end of the spectrum. You need to be right here in the center, right here in the center. If even leading a little bit more towards this way, towards the side where you are not attached and you are detached in a healthy way from your mother. You know you can call your mama anytime. You trust her. You value her. She gives you space to learn and grow. And she never judged all the unconditional stuff. All of that. Because I feel like that's what parents are here for. To be supportive and whatnot. But all that other shit, mm-mm. Better sit your old ass down, Miss Shirley. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. You birthed this penis. This ain't the penis you sitting on. This ain't the penis that you licking on. And if it is, then now we got a whole nother category. A whole nother one. Let's not forget. Get your ass in therapy somewhere. Sit down. Talk to somebody. Do some shadow work. I have a great book. It's called Self Love for Bad Bitches and Powerful Women. You ain't even got to identify as a bad bitch. You can identify as a powerful woman that didn't raise kids on your own and did everything else. Get you that book and work on developing your own self love, and then you can attract a real, adequate, sustainable, loving partner into your life. Get you a therapist, get you a counselor, work on whatever daddy issues, mommy issues, environment issues that you went up that made you feel like you can't trust men and can't have what you want from men in the first place that got you in the position where you feel like the only man that can love you is your son. Or something that you create because what's already there doesn't don't want you. Work on that. Quit trying to work on what we got going on over here, how he interacted with me. Go work on your own damn self. Sorry, not fucking sorry. Know your place. Play your role. Stay in your position as a mama and then reap the benefits of that. Because if you did what you were supposed to do as a mama as he was growing up and you doing what you're supposed to do now as a mom and not overstepping your boundaries, your son is going to always love you and respect you and make sure you're good in the first place. Because you making sure you're good. You get what I'm saying? Like... Of course he's going to do it too because everybody is a reflection of you. You putting all that extra pressure and shit off onto him when you the one that's supposed to be teaching him how to be in life. You expecting him to come into the picture and give you love when this is a fucking infant that was born on a clean slate that you raised. You got to teach him how life go. He don't come into, into the world knowing how shit go. Babies ain't born knowing how to tie their fucking shoes and stuff. You got to teach them how to be. Quit putting these responsibilities and emotional burdens off onto your son that came into this world as a clean slate because you are refusing to take the time out to do the work that you're supposed to do as a grown-ass, overgrown-ass woman that's either in or past her childbearing years. You ain't no little girl. You ain't 12, 13. You grown as hell. Get your ass to a therapist, work on that shit, and get in a real relationship so that way you ain't got time to be sitting up focusing so much about what's going on in your son's romantic love life that you won't ever be in. What's going on in his bedroom? Because you got your own healthy, happy, satisfying stuff going on in your life and in your bedroom. That's it. That's all. Again, my name is Corey L, so that's Corey L or Corey L. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Share this with somebody where you know it's going to grind their gears because I want to get the conversation started. But yes, we need to talk more about this. Your son is not here to be your fucking true love. That's what his father is here to do or the man that comes after, after his father. Never was supposed to be your son. Thank you for coming to my podcast, and I will see y'all on the next video.